questions come out. So what are we doing today? Well, we're making St. Bridget's crosses. So um, we are coming up on February 1st. And um, it's one of the cross quarter days, which means it's halfway between the solstice and the equinox, or a little later, the equinox and the solstice. And traditionally, uh, the Friday would be the beginning of spring. Um, around the world, it is uh, celebrated different ways. Um, in Ireland, uh, it was called Imelk, uh, which is spelled Imbolc, but uh, due to the vagaries of Irish spelling, the B is silent. Um, but it was also called Le Fil Brid, which means the Feast of St. Bridget. And um, then, of course, the day after, February 2nd, is one of the uh, 12 great church feasts of the Christian year, the Presentation of Christ at the Temple. And in Western Christianity, there was a very strong and beloved period called Candle Mass, where the, uh, where the candles for the year would be blessed. Um, so we are going to be talking about uh, various um, various things that we do. We're making <laughs> uh, making St. Bridget's crosses and um, go from there. So St. Bridget was um, the um, is one of the three patron saints of Ireland. Uh, she was a fourth century uh, abbess uh, of a monastery, and uh, there was actually before her a Irish goddess of the same name. Um, the traditional St. Bridget's Cross, looks like this, is not actually the only traditional one. This is just the most common today. Um, they often would have three arms, like this. A lot of reasons for that. Some people call it uh, a reference to the Trinity. Uh, people of a neo-pagan bent will uh, point towards um, the um, Irish penchant for... Uh, triple form gods and goddesses, gods and goddesses who had um, three aspects. Um, but then there are ones like this, which looks nothing like uh, the St. Bridges Cross you probably have seen before. Um, but as you can see, they're just simply woven together. And then, of course, we have this monster here, <clears throat> which <laughs> is called St. Bridges Girdle. <laughs> and this is uh, actually just another variant on the St. Bridget's Cross. You can see it's got crosses woven into it. And um, <clears throat> it was just another one. But in the counties where this one was done, um, the, uh, it was actually a child's game to uh, jump, through, uh, jump through the girdle as kind of a blessing or protection. Um, so to do this craft... Um, you need uh, four things. You're going to need some sort of reed. Um, we usually collect this, or well, traditionally you would use uh, water reeds, um, which I believe actually it's not really particularly cold in Ireland this time of year. You would actually have these growing green um, in your local lake or pond. Um, these are daylily stems. I also have some Chinese water reeds, which I'm told are the same species, but they're a little too dry, so I'm not going to use them today. They're really but stiff. They I are. Mean, we yeah. tried to use them, and they were they felt more like bamboo. So, um, but I, the, when these were newer, I actually bought these for a fencing project uh, this summer, and it got wet, wet, rained for a few days, and they were really soggy. So it could just be a question of their age. Um, yeah. So, um, but. Really, a lot of things will work. Raffia will work. You can actually use uh, straw if you are, or grass that is, um, that is long and intact. Um, if it's cold and wet, I'm sorry, if it's cold outside and you've uh, got dead grass, that should work. Uh, once again... We've used birch branches. We were, uh, birch and willow will work. Um, we did a rusty nail one year. <laughs> do you remember the rusty nails? I yeah, that was, that was one. So where, um, where do you... Where do you put, why do you make a St. Bridget's Cross, okay. and where would you put something like this? Okay. If you come to our house, you'll see them everywhere, but why and where? Okay, so the St. Bridget's Cross was put up as protection. Um, you Generally, every member of the family would make one, and you would put them at your doors and windows. Uh, traditionally, it was said that they were to keep bad fairies out of your house. 
Um, you especially put them around the windows of any children, especially ones that are unbaptized. <laughs> um, else, you it know, worked. We still have kids. Well, they well, are baptized, but they yeah. may be changed. They well, yeah, they're teens. So, <laughs> um, anyway, um, so yeah, you would normally put them at doors and windows. When you're done, you can take year old ones and they still have enough power to put up on your cow buyers or your chicken coops. Yep, our chicken or, coop has one. Or uh, perhaps in your garage or shop. Uh, the idea is, is that uh, those places are less trafficked, less important, so you can kind of have your cut rate protection there. <laughs> cut rate protection. All right, so if you are ready to show them how it's done. Yeah. And this really requires about six hands. But Jack only has two, and um, I'm going to grab the camera and kind of do an overhead shot so that you can get an idea of what it looks like when you're folding it. And we are going to put the video up after we're done so you can come back and reference it. You can come back and see how it's, you know, like one little step that maybe you missed. And then um, we should also say, for anyone concerned, Jack does work. And he has taken off his lunch break to come home and, and shoot this video. So um, we were going to say that at the beginning and we forgot. Yeah. And um, But we just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that yes, he's working, but he does get an hour long break. And thankfully he works really close. So he just zipped over and um, helped me with the house into shape just so where you guys can see it. And um, with that, I'm going to give this to him okay. and all of these daily reads and... Um, yeah, these work really well. And if you have some left in your flower bed, it's not too late to go out and harvest some to make these. Um, and then you could actually, they might be weathered and like gray, mm -hmm. but um, the best way to prepare to make the, the St. Bridget crosses is to soak them in water for two or three days, hopefully. These have actually only been soaking for about eight hours. Yeah. And they're good, but... It really they, depends. There may be some splitting, but, you know, um, we have walked an entire third grade class through making the St. Bridget crosses, and they turned out really, really well. We only had a couple kids cry. I was one of them. True. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm going to grab the camera, and then I'll just be doing an overhead shot. So, right. the first thing, uh, we talked about things you need. Oh, let's wait before we... Okay. Things you need are going to be at least, for a forearm cross... You need at least 16 reeds. You will also need scissors <laughs> or some other way to cut stuff. You, it's good if you have some sort of object to bend the reeds around. Oh, that's a good tip. Um, yeah. And then the last thing you're going to need is um, some sort of string. Um, thing that really looks beautiful is raffia. Um, and then it actually, that's, for example, what we used here. Um, it weathers to look exactly like the, the reeds themselves. I think traditionally they actually just use uh, green reeds, wrap it several times and tie it. Mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't worked with us because we have to deal with stuff that's been uh, set aside for several months. Yep. Uh, you want to prepare four reeds. So you take a reed, you want to get it close to the middle. I'm off to the side a little because... There's some stuff that I want to cut off, but you want to get close to the middle. You want to kind of bend your reed around. And this is to kind of keep it from snapping. That is correct. So what you do is you kind of press it in, crunch it a little. It's okay if it's gives a bit of a crunching sound, and then bend it over. What you don't want is you don't want it to break. This yeah. is an example of what would be bad. You can hear Horse. it cracking away. You can hear it cracking. This is why we're not using these reeds. And now you can see it's that the bend uh, is nice, but it's split. It's split, right? So now we've done this reed. We're gonna. I'm gonna do three more using the same thing. If they split, go on to another one. Obviously, while I said it's ha um, sixteen is good, you can make a St. Bridget's cross with as few as four reeds. Uh, they really generally look better if you've got at least three to a side. So now I've bent, well, I am in the process right now of bending my fourth. So they are bent. And now you take 
and you um, start to weave them. So the first one, you just bend over. Then you take your next one, find the one that you bent, and find the bend. You put it... Whoop, whoop. Okay, sorry. You put it <laughs> over the first, the first one, like that. So then you're just building up. The next one here, you once again take your bend, take it over, and this is the one place where it gets tricky. Now at this point, with this last one, you have to lock them into place. So, if you have a longer end, you feed it through. Okay, trying to get up. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Are you so trimming there's that? There's a little seed pod at the end of this particular one that made it a little hard to put it in. So, you feed it through here. And catch that loose Catch it one. over. And so you're going over the last one you did and into the hole in the first. There we go. Okay. And now you bring them all together, tighten them up, oh. and you have the beginning of your St. Bridget's Cross lock. There we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So okay. probably so maybe last round. Coming and... along to the end, we are at our last one. So what we should do here is actually this was the first of mine that had four. So coming to my very last one, bending it over again, and just like the last, the fourth one on our first row, I pull it around, put it into lock, pull it together, and there we have it. Boom. So now all that is required is you tie off the ends and cut it. We have it. Now you trim off the excess of your stems. You don't have to do it perfect. It can be, in fact, a lot of people like to do it at a bit of an angle or even oh, I like that. at a point. I'm glad I got you those big scissors. Yeah, these would be better for this. And then of course what you want to do is trim off the ends of your string. And here you go. A traditional forearm St. Bridget's Cross. All right. Well, that is the first of what we hope to become um, part of a series. We want to do live crafting classes online, short, quick ones, maybe a little bit longer.